Season's Greetings is another show that I worked on. It was kind of a holiday version of Georgia I'm Online. Uh, we won second place for the, I guess, Great Smoky Mountain uh, Film Festival. Kent Steele again came up with the thought. I guess he'd gone to some kind of um, programming convention or something. And apparently other states were doing holiday shows for Pledge. Again, this was another Pledge show. But um, I took the idea, like I said, a Georgia on my mind with a you know, holiday thing. So we traveled all over the state again, got to find out what is done around the state in different regions, you know, their own take on the Christmas holiday. This is the prettiest tree we've ever had. Go turn the lights out, let's look in the dark. Santa Claus still comes to my house, still, <laughs> you know. So when you go to bed at night, you know, there are packages under the tree, but when you wake up in the morning, Santa has been there. She looked inside and she saw this doll. She turned around, the look on her face was pure joy. One interesting thing that I did find out, and this is in the show and a lot of people uh, may not know this, <clears throat> there's a certain Christmas song that was written in Savannah, Georgia. And most people in the United States don't even know this. A 140 year old song that doesn't mention Christmas, but is only heard during the Christmas season. Dashing through the snow in a The guy who wrote the song lived in Massachusetts, but his brother had moved to Savannah and had become the pastor of a church in Savannah. He kind of like rambled around the country and he finally wound up in Savannah at his brother's church and he played uh, music there. He was looking out the window one day and he started reminiscing about Christmas time back in Massachusetts with the snow and all the trimmings of, uh, I guess, winter holiday. So he sat down and wrote the song, A One Horse Open Slam. What really evolved out of Season's Greetings was something even bigger. Uh, the Sunday evening we were in Augusta shooting the um, Christmas program at the oldest church in Augusta, St. Paul's. I was hesitating for a minute to see if I could remember the name of the building. But anyway, St. Paul's Episcopal Church in Augusta is right on the riverfront, right next to the, as they call it, the Celtic Cross, which is the founding spot of Augusta. We were there that evening shooting the Christmas concert. I was sitting upstairs in the balcony with the shooter, watching the monitor, just watching the type of shots he was getting. And I kept saying to myself, there's another TV program here. I don't know what it is, but there's another television program here. And it really kept bugging me. And once we finished the shoot, it was around 10 o'clock at night because we had run around Augusta all day. We went to Shoney's on Washington Road in Augusta. We were sitting there eating. I finally told the cameraman, I said, there's another TV show here. I don't know what it's about. I can't put my finger on it right now but there's something running through my head. He said, oh, we've been running around Augusta all day. You're just tired. Have a good night's sleep. You'll be fine. We woke up the next morning. We went to Washington, Georgia to interview an older lady about Christmas traditions there. And then we were heading back to Augusta to um, first interview uh, relatives of Eli Whitney. And when we got near the Augusta city limits, I said, I got it. Jesse Norman comes home to Augusta to perform with the Augusta Opera at Christmas time. And he said, that's pretty far-fetched. I said, yeah, it is. I said, maybe my brain was just wandering and that's where it, it went, but it sounds like something to me that will never happen. So we kind of like left it as it was. We went and interviewed the Whitneys. We left there and we went to the Lucy Laney Museum to interview the director there. Once the interview was finished there, I decided to ask the director if there was any contacts in the Augusta area for Jesse Norman, just for kicks. She said, yeah, a good friend of mine is uh, one of Jesse Norman's best friends. Uh, I'll give you her number. So I got the number, it was Christmas time. So after we left Augusta, Christmas holidays are around, you don't think about anything like that anymore. Then the next year, which was, um, 97, lawmakers began. So we went through lawmakers and somewhere near the end of March, the idea came back to me. I have this lady's number, why don't I just give her a call? 
So I did call her. And by the way, which, who she was, she was the assistant to the president at Payne College in Augusta. So anyway, she gave me the name of Jesse Norman's manager. I called her. She said, give us a detailed description of what you're trying to do, and we'll get back with you. And I did that. Uh, I think sometime around June that year, uh, her manager called me back and said, Ms. Norman needs more detail. Explain fully what you really want to do. So I did that again. Uh, it just so happens, the Friday before Labor Day, 1997, I get this phone call around 3 o'clock from Ms. Norman's uh, manager. Ms. Norman says she wants to do the project. She's fully ready to go with it. She needs a decision by Tuesday. Friday afternoon before a holiday weekend, state employees are gone. So I could not find anybody of any upper authority to tell this to. So I'm running around the building trying to find somebody. So eventually I did find Carol Fisk, who was uh, one of the executive producers, and she said, stall. Phil Bird, who we used in the late 80s to direct uh, symphonies around the state, uh, gave him a call. He said the same thing, stall him, because there was nobody to talk to and you come back on a Tuesday after a Monday holiday, there's nobody going to be around who can give an immediate decision anyway. So we stalled and we stalled, and I guess it worked because eventually what happened was in 98, early 98, Ms. Norman gave a benefit concert for a scholarship fund to be established in the name of the same lady who was the uh, Payne College president's assistant. Uh, a vice president of PBS flew down, Kent Steele, myself, Phil Bird, who I mentioned earlier, uh, directed most of our symphonies around the state um, tapings. We all went to Augusta. We sat in on the concert. The vice president was very impressed on how packed the hall was and the diversity of people that were there. He went back to Washington and decided to put $300,000 uh, down as seed money for us to produce the program. Uh, the rest of the money came from the Augusta community, businesses, as well as Convention and Business Bureau, and eventually it came to fruition. for six years on PBS as a holiday program and because NHK, which is a Japanese um, equipment, television equipment company, donated the first um, truck, high definition truck to shoot this um, concert, they decided to get it to air in Japan on Christmas Day 1998. So in essence, it was an international show. 